In the teaser for the upcoming Pixar movie Cars 3, we see Lightning McQueen get flipped into the air on the racetrack. Sparks fly, smoke billows from the car. It's not looking good for old Lightning, but there is some good news. He just saved 15% or more on his car insurance by switching to Geico. <laughs> Welcome to Film Theory, the show where crazy ideas supported by detailed research always gets the checkered flag. Now, as many of you loyal theorists know, I love me some Pixar, even if I do have a strange way of showing it. And by strange way of showing it, I mean ruining your childhood memories of beloved characters. Look, I'm not the one who decided that everybody in Wall-E is a cannibal, I just pointed it out, okay? Don't kill the messenger, and then liquefy their body and drink them as creepy future food. But never fear those of you who wish to have your childhoods remain intact, because today Today's Pixar theory isn't gonna have some deep, dark twist. Or is it? No, it isn't. Probably. Instead, today we're simply going to consider the world of cars. A world that looks just like our own, except that there's no people and all the machines run themselves. To catch you up, the first Cars movie gave us the story of a young hotshot race car named Lightning McQueen who gets a shot at the championship, but then gives it up because he realizes how important the other people in his, uh, other cars in his life really are. The sequel was the next obvious place that you take that concept. A complicated spy thriller about car espionage and alternative fuel source conspiracy theories. Because why not? And Cars 3 looks like it's lining up to be a comeback story. We've got a trailer which shows lightning in a catastrophic crash, and if this series keeps following the trajectory of the Rocky series, the third installment will be about our heroes fight back up to the top. And hey, if we're really lucky, we'll get a fourth one where McQueen races against a Russian muscle car and solves communism. I must break you. Sure, you laugh that that sounds ridiculous, but I bet you didn't expect the spy thriller plot either. Long story short, the Cars universe has always been a weird one filled with a lot of questions about the logistics of a world filled only with sentient automobiles. But one question none of us have ever really stopped to answer is this. Are the cars in Cars really cars? I mean, sure, it's the title of the movie, and they look and behave like cars, but who knows? That just may be more of mainstream media's fake news. I mean, they have eyes and tongues, and there are no drivers, and let's be honest, how did a society of living cars even come to be in the first place? They're clearly on Earth, but there are no humans, so what happened? What are these creatures? I am 100% confident I figured it out, and spoiler alert, they're not cars. What started out as a simple, stupid question led me down the rabbit hole of this bizarre car-themed universe, and the answers I found will upend everything you thought you knew about Mater and the gang. And the details I find here pose some really interesting revelations about that infamous Pixar theory. A theory that you all have wanted me to cover for quite a long time. So theorists, start your search engines because it's time to take this Cars Omni theory from 0 to 60 in about 15 minutes flat. Now, to begin, it probably merits taking a second to acquaint you with that Pixar theory. A theory that started with, as far as I can tell, online movie blogger John Negroni, which aims to unite all the Pixar movies into not just the same universe, but also come up with a cohesive timeline of events where one movie leads to the next, leads to the next. Suck on that, Marvel! Here's everyone thinking you started the whole huge connected cinematic universe thing, but Pixar's been doing it back since 1995, in a theoretical sense. So no wonder you don't have an Oscar award yet, and yet Academy Award winning Suicide Squad does. Uh. Now, I'm not gonna dive into the nitty-gritty of that theory today. It's one that we'll probably be piecing together on our own across multiple future Pixar episodes. But to get a taste of this thing and start you thinking about it, take the example of By and Large. Most casual Pixar viewers know it as the corporation that runs everything in Wally. -E. World leadership! We have no one but them to thank for the cannibalistic cupcake in a cup. But for really astute viewers, you can actually see the company's rise to power throughout multiple other Pixar films. In Toy Story 3, you can see their logo on Buzz's batteries. By the time you get to Up, by and large is now involved in the construction business, with their logo on the equipment in front of Carl's house. And it's not just the equipment, B&L is also buying all the houses in Carl's neighborhood. My boss would be happy to take this old place off your hands and uh, for double his last offer. What do you say to that? And get this, it's even spreading to the Cars franchise now. If you examine the Cars 3 extended trailer frame by frame, you see the logo appear in the stadium, making it the first time by and large has appeared anywhere in the Cars movie series. Did you spot it? Here, let me slow it down for you. Still no? Here, let's go frame by frame. 
Welcome to my life writing theories. I live my life a quarter frame at a time. Now, the reason I wanted to start talking about this today is because I have a few problems with the Pixar theory timeline. And the first major batch revolves around cars. The theory goes that a super intelligent AI, first created by Syndrome in his quest to kill all the superheroes back in The Incredibles, forms BNL to take control of the planet. Along the way, intelligent animals like the ones that we see in Finding Nemo and Ratatouille rise up against humans, a war ensues, animals are killed off, and the AI acting through by and large send humans into space, thus kicking off Wally -E and leaving the planet alone to the AI. The AI begin a life of freedom on their newly conquered planet by assuming the form of sentient cars, planes, boats, and cranes. Cause seriously, think about the coolest way to get around. That's why you don't see humans or animals in either car movie, and yet see the remnants of human society like the Eiffel Tower, Route 66, and things like that. Oh man, you got all that? Being a part and piecing together this whole theory in detail is gonna be like this channel's equivalent of FNAF. Well, no time like the present. Carpe that DM, let's start today. So this whole Pixar theory is an interesting explanation, but there are a lot of assumptions. Assumptions that when you actually stop to look at the deeper evidence, just don't work out. And the first set of assumptions that I wanna tackle today has to do with the nature of the cars. You see, based on the theory as it exists, the cars would be basically smart driverless cars taken over by Syndrome's super advanced AI. They would be cars, machines with computers in them controlled by an AI except they're not. The cars are actually organic creatures, living creatures with a car body as a tough exoskeleton, but containing some sort of internal organs, a soft and squishy inside like the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop. <laughs> You could almost equate them to that terrible monster truck movie that no one bothered to see. By the way, it's worth mentioning that thing cost $125 million to make and only earned back $60 million. Makes you almost feel bad for them. Almost. Anyway, back to the good car movies. We know that the cars are living from a bunch of different evidence sprinkled throughout the various car features. First, they breathe oxygen. In the opening of Cars 2, we see super spy Finn McMissile put on an underwater respirator in order to swim out of sight of the criminal syndicate. Later in that same movie, we see plenty of scenes of cars eating and drinking. On the plane to Japan, we see snack foods littered around the floor, things like chips and sushi, and again at the party, more sushi at the bar. And of course, the infamous pistachio ice cream bit. How about that pistachio ice cream? A scene that tells us Mater knows what pistachios are, what ice cream is, and has tasted it and enjoyed it. And sure, we see them drinking varieties of oil and gas, presumably to power their engines, but why would they actually need to ingest food products if they weren't organic in some way? Even some of the offshoot cartoons support the idea of the cars being organic creatures. In the first Tales from Radiator Spring Short, we see Lightning McQueen getting a case of the hiccups. <gasps> hiccups are caused by irritating the diaphragm, a dome-shaped muscle at the bottom of your chest. When you do things like eat or drink too quickly, it upsets the diaphragm and causes it to pull down in a jerky way. You suck air into your throat suddenly, your vocal cords close abruptly, and you're left with a hiccup. <gasps> All of this evidence, from the underwater breathing, to the food, to the hiccups, implies that under the hood of the cars, both literally and figuratively, they possess internal organs like lungs, stomachs, and diaphragms in addition to their car engines. But perhaps the biggest confirmation comes from the animators themselves. In most interviews, the Pixar crew tends to be dismissive of biological questions as they relate to the cars. I'm sorry, we have to turn off the video here. But one featurette released on the official Disney Pixar channel entitled Pixar Studio Stories gave us all of the confirmation that we needed. He can't open his doors because that's where his brains are. They have a brain. A giant pink pulsating brain hidden behind those car windows. It's just disturbing. Try getting that out of your head the next time you see a Cars movie. Bring out the brain bleach, please. So it would appear that the cars are actual living creatures and not just some highly advanced driverless cars. And before you complain about how stupid that all sounds, there's an actual evolutionary chain present throughout these films. At about 50 minutes and 10 seconds into Cars 2, as if watching nearly an hour of a kid's movie featuring cars in Japan busting a fake eco-friendly fuel ring and a massive James Bond riff wasn't bizarre enough, we see birds. Except they're not birds. They're actually mini planes. Think that was just because the Pixar team was off their meds for what seems like the entirety of this movie? Well, think again, because in another of the Tales from Radiator Springs animated shorts, you actually get VW Beetle Beetles. 
these tiny cars with insect wings that make up this disturbing universe's bug population, thus proving that the Pixar team is off their meds literally all the time. Or on something else. Now, this is an important detail because it shows us that in this universe, these car-like creatures don't just become planes when they fly like the birds, but rather they can develop organic wings like those of a dragonfly. And all of this is without even mentioning the fact that there exist alien car-like species, as we see in Mater's Tall Tales UFO Edition, which we know is true since Mater shows that he can in fact fly in the end of the episode. As one final detail, it's interesting to note that the rubber tires are aren't part of these car creatures. In multiple parts of the series, but most notably Car 2's train scene, we see characters moving around with their tires removed. They're the equivalent of shoes for the cars, going on the feet, or in this case, rims. Suffice it to say, alien or no, these are living creatures with internal organs that are protected by a car-like exoskeleton, and with multiple differentiated animal-like species that have evolved over time, from literal boats, planes, and cranes, to bug-like and bird-like animals. In short, when you look at all of this evidence, there is only one possible conclusion, that the cars in cars aren't cars at all, but are much more likely a highly evolved form of insect. Sounds ridiculous, but think about it. Just like an insect has a hard exoskeleton made of chitin, the creatures in the carverse have evolved a stronger exoskeleton made of various metals. Neither cars nor insects seem to possess an internal skeleton, and so in both creatures, muscles appear to be directly attached to the exoskeleton itself. An insect's exoskeleton isn't a single surface, but rather consists of multiple jointed plates, so that when an insect moves a muscle, it causes the connected exoskeleton plate pieces to move as well. It's the same style of movement that we see in the cars. Multiple hard plates or shells moving when the internal musculature moves as well. But most importantly of all, and the piece of evidence that solidifies this, is as we saw with the VW Beetle example, some species of the cars are able to grow wings that aren't made of metal. Instead, based on the appearance and behavior of those wings, they're made of chitin, just like the wings of a dragonfly, the same substance that makes up an insect's exoskeleton. Those chitin-based wings are a remnant from the car's evolutionary ancestors. The cars in cars aren't cars, they're insects. And that does some really interesting things for the Pixar theory. First and foremost, it removes cars from being attached to the era of humans. That sort of evolution is gonna take a really long time, so get it away from the Wallys, Nemos, and Incredibles of the world and put it out toward the future. But surprisingly enough, we do happen to have one film in Pixar's lineup that does follow super intelligent bugs in their quest for survival. Bugs that already have figured out ways to master machines. Bugs that live in a world where there are remnants of human society, but you see no humans present. Yes. What I propose to you is that Cars isn't so much its own entity, but rather a bug's life 2, 3, and coming up on 4. The natural progression of insects evolving and taking over the planet Earth. And with that, we have the first puzzle pieces in place as we all start to build our own film theorist approved mega Pixar theory. But for now, remember, it's just a theory, a film theory, and cut. Are you as excited as I am? This is my first toe dipped into the Pixar theory pool, and already we're coming up with some huge revelations. So if you want to unravel the mysteries of the Pixar universe with me, make sure you subscribe to the channel by slapping the film theory logo smack dab in the middle of the screen. And hey, after you've done that, check out my past theory on Wally -E cannibalism. Or, for something lighter, just let it go and watch this one on Frozen. Now, if y'all excuse me, I gotta go work on a Logan theory, because if everything goes according to plan, that one's happening next week.